What's up you guys? So today I'm going to teach you how to do a dirty pour with resin. Now, for this I'm going to use my favorite resin, Art Coat by Stone Coat Countertops. And for this piece I'm going to mix up mm, four ounces of resin. And since this is a one-to-one -one ratio resin, which means you do equal parts of both, I'm going to do two ounces of part A and two ounces of part B. I start with the part B in the mixing cup first because it is thinner and is less likely to stick to the walls of my mixing cup, which will make it easier for me to incorporate the part A and part B completely together, which will um, mean that it'll be less likely to give me weak spots in my final piece. Now this canvas is a 10 by 10 and I have some resin colors already pre-mixed from another piece that I did that I may end up using as well because I love, love dark turquoise and also hot pink. So this resin on the bottle says that I need to mix it for three minutes to fully incorporate it. You also need to make sure that you scrape the sides, the bottom, and the stir stick that you're using. This is to ensure that you have no weak spots in your final piece. You also really wanna make sure that you use a graduated mixing cup like this one that gives you measurements so you can make sure that you do the proper ratio of your resin because if you do too much of one or the other you will end up with a resin that either never sets or sets up too fast and this resin gives you at least 75 minutes working time I worked it well over two hours before and that is really valuable since resins, is, it's intimidating as it is. And you really want to make sure you have as long as possible to work with your resin. So you can take your time and you'll be less likely to make any mistakes. Now while you're mixing your resin, you'll notice these little bubbles pop up. That is perfectly fine. You're going to hit those with heat later. And your heat can either be a heat gun or a torch. I'd advise against a blow dryer because it's going to blow too much air and not enough heat to pop these bubbles without disrupting your design. So once you have your resin all mixed up and incorporated, it'll be more clear with, I mean, given it's going to have bubbles, but that's fine. You won't see any swirls where the two parts haven't really connected. Make sure that you're scraping the sides and the bottom and your stir stick periodically. So once you have this all mixed up, you can start mixing your colors. I am going to use all paste today. And these are paints that are made specifically for resin. And that just means it'll mix in really easily to my resin and won't give me any chunks or little tadpoles or freckles of paint. You wanna pour into your little mixing cups as much resin as you want specific colors to be represented. So I know that I want half a cup represented of my midnight blue here. This is from Just Resin. It's a paste. I'm going to make sure I mix it up just a little bit to make sure that everything's incorporated in my paint. Some pastes have a tendency to separate after being on the shelf for a little while, kind of like um, ketchup or peanut butter will separate if it's on the shelf for a little bit. which it's still good to use. You just have to shake it or mix it or whatever. So I've got my midnight. I'm going to mix also some blue diamond from Just Resin. 
And then I have the dark turquoise and hot pink that I mixed earlier. Now just as when you mix your part A and part B together and scrape the bottom, the sides, and your stir stick, you want to do that when you mix your paints as well because you don't want any chunks stuck to the side or to your stir stick or to anything. You want it all to be evenly mixed. And it doesn't take long to mix your pastes or extra fine like art micas into your resin because that's what it's made to do. You can use um, acrylic paints if you like. Just make sure you um, strain them so that you get any dry chunks of paint out of it. Um, you can use basically any paint you want to. I would stay away from oil based paints though because they tend to, um, you know, oil paints never really dry. And they can also give your painting divots or fish eyes, and that's not really very attractive in a resin painting. I'm also going to mix in some Bling It. This is a powder from Resin Art. All of these paints you can find on our website, artisttilldeath.com. This is just basically a mother of pearl looking powder. It's very sparkly, very beautiful. This one has um, a blue interference to it. Whenever you mix a powder into your resin, be very careful not to breathe it in. Most micas are not safe to breathe in. Just because micas are basically ground up stone and color and it's just not good to breathe in from any brand. So let's get this painting going. I always put down a thin layer of clear, and this is because it will make my tinted resin flow across the surface of my substrate canvas or board or whatever have you more easily. If you've ever worked with watercolor or alcohol ink, then you are very familiar with this idea. Um, make sure your hands are free of paint or you're going to get a splotch like that one right there. That's fine on this because we're not doing a negative space. We're going to do a dirty pour. And now essentially what a dirty pour is, is you mix your colors up and then you pour all of them um, into another cup and then you pour out that cup over your surface. And it looks a lot like ribbon candy to me. Um, and it's a very popular technique used in resin paintings. I'm going to hit the canvas with a little bit of heat to pop the bubbles that we mixed in earlier. And make sure I have no raw spots where there's just dry canvas showing through. And now when you do a dirty pour, it's very important that you don't let those colors sit in the cup too long. And that's because they'll start to incorporate with each other and get a little bit muddy. So I'm going to start building my color. I'm going to use some white that I mixed earlier. This is white from the brand Just Resin and a little bit of Stone Coat Base Tint. I'm going to use my Midnight Blue. I'm going to use some Hot Pink from Just Resin. Then I'm going to put some Bling It. I like to pour thick puddles of color because if you pour thinner, then the colors are going to be really busy on your canvas. 
Then I'm going to use some dark turquoise from Color Obsession. And then more white. And then the blue diamond from Just Resin. And a little bit more hot pink just to brighten up the palette a little bit. So now I have a full cup of color. I'm going to give it just a little swirl just to make the colors more interesting when I start pouring them out. And I'm going to tilt the canvas just a little bit. just to give the paint something to run to. All right, let's hit it with some heat. You can see these little cells popping up. It's very desirable in resin art. And I'm just going to tilt these colors around to get my design flowing. I just want to tilt to the corner and pull it back. And these are going to stretch the colors across the canvas and should give us a really nice design. You can also hit areas that you want to move faster with a little bit of heat. You can use a torch or a heat gun, and that'll just make them flow more quickly. Like down here in this corner, they're not really going that fast. And then I hit it with some heat, and there it's off the side. Going to hit some areas with just a little bit more heat to create a different kind of pattern since it was kind of solid down there in the bottom. And I'm really looking for only the areas to move that I'm adding the extra heat to. which is an awesome trait of really good resin with a thick viscosity. Really want to be careful when using a torch that you don't scorch your resin. If you do, you're going to have a lot of cleanup to do once your piece is set up. It'll leave kind of a scab texture. go down this way. You're going to hit it with a little bit more heat to make sure we popped all the bubbles. We'll revisit tomorrow and see how this piece set up. Till then, thanks for watching, y'all. Bye. 
so here are the pieces the next day they set up lovely as you can see sorry that's my finger hitting the bottom of it slight glitter from the bling it I do still have to finish up the sides, but very cool looking piece for sure.